page 63, this is the middle one, or number four on that. So each of these studies, they're getting a little trickier, a little more challenging. We can handle it though. I just go through the process, let's see what we end up with. It's two lines long, treble bass clef, two sharps in the key signature. This is in the key of D major. D major has two sharps, an F sharp and a C sharp. And six eight time, so an eighth note gets a count now. That means a dotted quarter note gets three counts because a dotted quarter note's the same as three eighth notes. Let's take it one hand at a time, make sure we got each hand figured out. The right hand is third finger here on the F sharp, that puts it here. So we're in the five finger pinna scale. Those are the notes we're going to use. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Just a bunch of eighth notes. Okay. That's really all it is. It's left hand, well, down here. One, isn't this exciting? Oh, goody. So then I put the hands together and see, I just want to know how they're working together. It's here, and then here, two, six, and then again, same measure, same thing. And then third measure, it's one here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we're here. So I go through and I put the hands together, and then I go back over it however it takes, how long it takes, and get rid of the hesitations. Now if you're struggling with it, then break it up into pieces. Don't keep trying to do the whole thing. Take it like a measure or two at a time. Get that first measure. Got it? Well the second measure is just like it. And then the third measure, work on that, it's here. The feeling of the first notes in the third major is the same as the other measures. That part's the same. You just got to add some more notes. There, and then get the other measure. So I'm doing it like just a measure at a time. I'm not constantly playing the same measures over and over and over. It's an inefficient way to practice when you're trying to learn a new piece of music. Spend your time working on what you can't play, not what you can play. Once you get it all learned, get it all covered, then you go back and put it all together. So once I got the hands together, I get rid of the hesitations. So it's a steady beat. At some, you go slow if you have to. Make sure the whole thing is at the same speed, though. Don't cheat the dotted quarter notes because you got to hold them down so long. Make sure this, this, the beat is the same throughout. And then we have the articulation. We have the slurs in here. Whatever the notes are. If these are phrases, then you're going to lift up. Okay, maybe they're phrases. And the left hand. In my mind, those are lousy phrases. It, it, to me, it's just an accompaniment. So it's a difference on interpreting a phrase or a slur. They're not the same. They're, they're both indicated by a curved line, maybe. A slur, you're going to connect the notes within the slur. It's like if that first measure is a slur, I'm going to connect those notes. Okay. But with a slur, you don't always lift up before and after slur. Fits up music. So if these are slurs, I could connect all that. I could connect it in theory. A phrase, on the other hand, is you're going to lift up before and after the phrase, but you may or may not connect the notes within the phrase because you're going to have staccatos inside a phrase. So if these are phrases, I'm going to lift up. I'm going to connect them anyway because it doesn't fit putting staccatos in there. I mean, you might try it. In theory, you could do it probably. Just in my mind, this flows better if you connect it.
but in the left hand, to me, these are slurs. So I'm not going to lift up the left hand, I'm going to connect it. So I'm going to lift up in the right hand, but not the left. connect the left hand all the way through. You don't have to do it that way. You could lift up if you want in the left hand and lift up. I don't like lifting up at the end of the first line in the left hand because this and the left hand uh, measure four. This tends to lead into measure five. It leads into it and typically when something leads into it you'll connect it. So I would connect the left hand there. Even though I'm lifting up in the right hand for the phrase. So I'm lifting up here but not there. That's how I would do it. You do it however you do it or however your teacher says to do it. So once I have an idea of the articulation, then I'll add the dynamics. MF at the beginning, mezzo forte, is moderately loud and that's the melody which is the right hand. Unless you want to treat the left hand as a counter melody, which I don't recommend it, I think it's harmony, then it's the right hand. Whatever you think sort of loud is, moderately, not loud. This keeps soft, so I'm sort of heavy in one hand and I'm light in the other. Measure five and six, you get the hairpin to go up to loud. Don't get loud till measure seven, so it's a... There's your loud. So because we got two measures to do this in, we got to plan it out. Because otherwise you'll be loud by the end of measure five. I'm there. No. So you plan it out. Well, it depends on the music. How can we do this? I have this in the left hand. Four notes. I could play each of those notes a little louder and let the right hand go up accordingly. So it's every three. Loud. See each group of three eighth notes I got a little louder that way. I keep the left hand out of the way. And then coming down, you just that's fine. Each note can get a little softer. There. Doesn't say how much to come down. It's up to you. What do you feel? Mezzo forte or mezzo piano, whatever, it's the end of the piece. Then the speed. Marato, well, it's a little tricky because it's 6 8 time. 6 8 time you can do a lot of things with. I could treat the speed as the eighth notes themselves. One, two, three, four, and that there, the Marato's going to be on the beat. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sometimes you'll treat the speed to the natural accents. Because in six, eight times, it's one, two, three, four, five most of the time. So you would feel it in two. Well, in that case, just speed it up a little bit. One, two, one, two. There. So you see, so the speed is, uh, I, I, I have problems with six, eight time because there's so many different ways of interpreting it. I think for this lesson, we're going to treat it like the eighth notes are the beat, and we're going to do it by the eighth notes. So it's going to be a one, two, three, four, five, six. There. interpret it on this one. Who knows? I could change my mind tomorrow or later today. I do that sometimes. However, it's however your teacher chooses to interpret it also. Then there's a note underneath this one to transpose it to C major. Well, we're in D major. C major is just one 
a second down here. It's our white keys. So you can do that. We can do that. I could do it that way. I'm playing the same fingers as I would play there. I'm just thinking which finger would I play if I were if this were that. I'm just in a different position on the keyboard. Another way to do it is to do the interval thing. I'm starting here. Go down a second. Down a second. Up a fifth. Down a third. Down a second. Down a second. Up a fifth. And these. Up a third. Down a third. Up a third. One way of doing it. Another way to do it is because we're only went down a second is I can read the notes and mentally transpose them down a second. So instead of this F, I'm going to do an E. E and a D and a C and a G. So I'm just transposing every note down a second. So this, instead of a D, it's a C because I went down a second. And here, the second line, remember that instead of an F, it's an E. And instead of a D, it's a C. It's another way of transposing. It takes practice to do it. Take it slow and easy. Hesitate all you need to on this. Doesn't matter. You're just thinking about, let's see, it says this note in the music. If I have an F in the music, it's an F sharp because of the key signature. But I'm not thinking about sharps and flats. I'm thinking about note names, and I'm just going to play in that key. So I'm in this position in D major, so the F sharp is part of the position, that would be it. But in C major, here, there are no sharps or flats in this position. So I'm only going to play white keys, so the third finger is here. So instead of the F, I'm going to play the E. I know it's an F sharp, but that's because of the key signature. Forget the key signature, I'm just looking at the notes. So instead of an F, it's an E, I go down a second. That's all I'm doing. And then the left hand again, instead of a D, I go down a second. So I'm playing C's here. Instead of an F, I'm playing an E. Instead of an A measure four, I play a G, because it's down a second. So I'm transposing in my head where the where the notes are in the staff. Is that? Or I can just start here and I can think play the interval in the staff, play that in here. So if the music in the staff goes down a second here, then I go down a second from where I am. If it goes down a second, I go down a second. It does take practice. It can be very confusing. Let's play this together slowly and check the notes and the rhythms. I'll give us six counts because there are six counts in a measure. Yeah, because an eighth note gets a count here. One, two, three, four, ready, go. Five, six. Five, six. Six off. 